you know, I left a pretty secure, you know, role and a pretty steady page. Well, definitely steady paycheck, had a great group of people I was working with. And, you know, I stepped out from that with not a lot of guarantee that things were going to work out. And so I was kind of just taking on projects wherever I could. So I took on a rebranding project for an organization. And I mean, it's funny because, you know, they had loved me. They loved my materials. They loved what I was making. Mm -hmm. um, and they just asked me to come and do the same thing for them. And I very quickly realized I am not an agent. And see, you know, and I'm not sort of equipped to do that. So that was, that's one example of something that where I sort of bit off more than I could chew in that moment. But I will say, um, I'm, I'm glad I did it because I learned a lot about what I am and am not really equipped to do. So I, I learned a lot from it, even though it was kind of maybe a, an epic failure in the, in the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, but the second thing I'll say is, so I wrote a book called um, louder than words that came out in 2016. My first two books had done really well. Um, I thought I'd figured out the formula. You just you write a book and you put it out and people buy it. It's amazing. It's so easy. Yeah, yeah. And this third book did not perform as well as the first two books it performed. And I was starting to get really nervous because I didn't know why it wasn't doing as well as the other books. And I reached out to kind of a mentor from afar, um, someone who is a multiple best-selling author and had been really inspirational to me over the years. And he said, listen, the marketplace is almost always stupid at first, right? When something comes out, the marketplace is almost always stupid. It doesn't know what it wants. And it takes time sometimes for things to find their footing. And it made so much sense to me. And he said, listen, are you proud of what you wrote? I said, I am. I think it's maybe the best book I've written. He said, great. Let it find its footing. Let it do its thing. And the reality is the book never sold as well as my other books, but it is the book that I get emails from people around the world about more than any other book. The the funny thing is, it's like, I, I realized, I thought I was writing a book for the masses, but I was writing a book for people who are at the peak of their game and maybe they're starting to feel a little stale. They're starting to feel like they need to go to another place because the people I get emails from are, you know, world famous, you know, uh, artists, world famous business leaders, people who are really well known and they'll email me and say, hey, this book really hit me in a profound way. So what I realized is the market for that book, I thought it was the mass, I thought it was everyone and it turns out the market for that book might be a very select group of people worldwide and I just had to wait for it to find its way into those people's hands but the mm. influence that that book has had has been pretty profound so again we often don't know like we think we know who we're making something for but we often don't know who it's actually going to influence until we allow it to have legs and we allow it to, to find its way in the marketplace let it marinate for a little bit and it seems like too even though sales weren't quite up to par as, as what you wanted. It, it's, it impacted the right people and that probably right. in time uh, by impacting the right people will lead to other opportunities that you probably would never have had if it's just anybody and everybody's and their cousin Sally's picking it up. You know, it's like really laser focused and hitting home. So yeah, I, right. yeah, I think there's, there's value in that and I think if it hasn't already, I mean you mentioned you've got a lot of great feedback, I'm sure. The opportunities, the specific opportunities that come out of it will turn into Will, will make up for the lack of commercialized sales. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that clip. And if you did, go ahead and click the link in the description below to check out the full interview to keep those creative gears turning. Remember to click the notification bell, comment below, and subscribe to this channel for more amazing, thought-provoking interviews. I'm Sean Jay, and welcome to the Making Magic Podcast.